Thank you, Vicky. Thank you. We're good? Yes, action. Hi, folks. Tom Wilson here, ready to perform my first big comedy special. You all remember me, Biff, the bad guy, and all three Back to the Future movies, Freaks and Geeks, The Informant, the Matt Damon. Th I'm just kidding. Nobody cares about Matt Damon. But this, to me, is what it's all about, performing live for live human beings, because that's who I care about, people. That's what this business is all about. Is that all right? Good. All right. Mr. Wilson, let's get a quick picture. They're introducing me right, right now. One gotta, quick question. I Can I get an autograph from Michael J. No, Marks? I don't know. You see him, don't They're you? They're introducing me right, right now. Look, quick, butthead, butthead. Butt butt do the butthead. Butt 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 yes. Okay, all right. One, butt head. two, three. Oh, damn! Oh, butt head. Oh. Oh. Here you go. All right. Ready for the show. Ladies and gentlemen, Tom Wilson. the future stuff right off the bat. <laughs> yes, I was in the movie. You're all sitting there asking, that's not the guy from Back to the Future. Yes, it is. <laughs> it's me, buttheads. I'll do all, thank you. I'll do all the lines from the movie. We'll get over it. We'll move on with the show. How would that be? Amy McFly. Thank you. What are you looking at, butthead? Ta-da. I think you got the wrong car, McFly. No, Biff, you leave her alone. <laughs> I do Crispin Glover better than I do myself. <laughs> Look, I know, we have sci-fi convention geeks here tonight. Like, oh, that's the guy from the movie! <laughs> <laughs> Calm down, Eddie Munster. We'll get through this together, okay? <laughs> no, look, there are people with Coke bottle glasses. I hope he signs my laser disc after the show. All right, it'll be fun. Look, I, I wrote a song. It's gonna save us all a lot of time after the show. When I'm flying in a plane or I'm on the street, there's a lot of friendly people that I like to meet. They shake my hand but never ask my name And they start asking questions that are always the same Hey, what's Michael J. Fox like? He's nice What's Christopher Lloyd like? Kinda quiet What's Crispin Glover like? Unusual Stop asking me the question I went to the bar mitzvah of my nephew Josh Now I'm not Jewish but I like to nosh Put on my yarmulke, started to pray When the rabbi leaned over and I heard him say Hey, was that real manure? No, it wasn't How was that DeLorean? A piece of garbage Do those hoverboards really fly? It's a movie Stop asking me the question Can we take your picture? Come on, look mean Would you call my friend a butthead on his answering machine? Questions, questions fill my head I went to my doctor, my doctor said What does a key grip do? Set up lights What does the best boy do? Help the key grip What does a producer do? I don't know, stop asking me the question Do you all hang out together? No we don't How's Crispin Glover? I never talked to him Back to the future for Not happening Stop asking me the question, hey Who's the nicest famous guy you know? Adam Sandler. Who is the biggest jerk? Gary Busey. How much money do you make? More than you do. So stop asking me the question. <laughs> now that we're over that little speed bump, let's continue with the show. So I'm living like a magician now. <laughs> they have panache, vivacity, everything. You know, you work with magicians in show business, everything they do. Was this your card? <laughs> I don't want to do that in life. Honey, here's your toast. <laughs> the phone bill's here. <laughs> Let's
let's get a few things straight right off the bat, okay? Just so we understand each other, my real name is not Biff. <laughs> my name is Tom. Hi. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. Thank you. Movies are pretend. Oh. <laughs> Cars don't fly. Time travel does not exist. When a five foot two inch guy punches me in the face, I don't get knocked unconscious. <laughs> I'm an actor. You want me to be unconscious? Pay me. <laughs> Cha-ching. You're so strong. I'm out. <laughs> I studied acting. I did. Went to acting school. I went to the American Academy of Dramatic Arts. Football scholarship. Thank you. <laughs> we, I, the fighting thespians. Excuse me. Yeah. <laughs> Act like a winner. Yes, we lost every game. <laughs> you never saw more dramatic cheerleaders in your life. <laughs> Acting school cheerleaders, ready? Hit it! Go! <laughs> Football team full of actors. Our, our punt returner would get out there alone in front of a stadium full of people, he'd get jazz hands, and Fosse, and Fosse, and Fosse, Fosse, catch, catch, three. Bob Fosse was a choreographer, sir. I, I thought you'd know by the shirt. Um, but well, it's a nice shirt. It's a beautiful shirt. People want to categorize comedians today. Come out on stage, has to be this type of comedian for this type of demographic, right? This kind of performer for this kind of audience. He can't categorize me. I defy categorization. First of all, I'm not white. <laughs> Look, I'm Irish, okay? <laughs> that's right. Hey. I'm Irish. That's not white. That's almost clear, okay? <laughs> I'm, I'm a translucent American. I'm proud of it. That's right. You could hold me up to a light bulb, see my entire circulatory system. I don't use soap. Give me Windex and a squeegee. I'm window man. I use sunblock. Yeah, SPF, don't go outside. Why don't we have you Northern European people here tonight? Wow, wow, wow. I see. Fun summer memories, huh? It's summer! Let's go throw a frisbee! <laughs> oh, the burning orb is back! The burning orb! Back inside, children! Back inside! <laughs> the orb of death has returned to taunt us! <laughs> we will stay in our huts until the burning orb has gone under the horizon. <laughs> then, children, we will... Go outside and play. Kick the glow stick. <laughs> we have people clap for being Irish, huh? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Irish. Wow. A lot of people. Are you St. Patrick's Day Irish? You, you know, you know about your culture? Because that's people think I'm Irish. Drinking river dance. <laughs> There's more to Irish culture than drinking and river dance. There's fighting. <laughs> the Irish are crazy people. I come from a long line of Irish lunatics. <laughs> people complain to about violence in rap music, hip hop lyrics, too much violent imagery. Have you people ever heard an Irish folk song? They begin the same, it's the green rolling hills of Ireland. The sheep running across the meadow. Ah, oh, there's me cousin Mike. I haven't seen in 15 years every course. Oh, the blood poured red when we hit him in the head and we kicked him in the neck till he died. They don't care, every song. <laughs> that was enough to prove we were tough, them mum baked us up pie. Oh, did he eat them, did he eat them, did he eat them, did he eat them? 
Start them young. Hand me a hammer, Charlie. There's gonna be a fight. <laughs> then you hit him with a hammer, Sean. <laughs> well, they knew what a folk song was about. Come on. I would if God was one of us. <laughs> Shut up. Hand me a hammer, Charlie. <laughs> My grandfather was Irish. He came here from Ireland. He <laughs> Comes over, gets off the boat, went to work at a Pennsylvania coal mine. He was a little kid. I mean, like a seven-year-old coal miner. He's like, hey, this job sucks, hey. He's a baby coal miner. <laughs> went through life in the coal mines of Pennsylvania. By the time he's 75 years old, now I'm five. I'm the little kid. He's still the toughest guy in the room. It's winter. Our car gets stuck in the snow. He's the first guy. I'll go lay behind the back tires. <laughs> Give it more gas. You have that guy in your family, come on. Every Thanksgiving, Uncle Frank, hey, punch me in the neck as hard as you can. <laughs> Frank, the kids are at the table, the food's ready. Come, look, I'm carrying the refrigerator. Great, Frank, who cares? Come on, it's Thanksgiving. <laughs> That's right, these are tough guys. Absolutely. Got the guys in the military in my family? Do we, I should, do we have military representatives this evening? Oh, they, they always, oh, they always, there's a bark or a seal thing. Oh, they just, that's good. Nobody says, I'm in the military. I mean, no one, it just doesn't happen. I, but, oh, what's that barking? You're Marines, right? I think we stopped doing that thing too early in life, and that's useful. <laughs> Come on, we stopped that in fourth grade. I say bring it back for adults. <laughs> Ladies, you're at the bank or something. You get somebody with an attitude. Excuse me, miss, excuse me. Hey, the bank line starts back there. That's all you need. No big argument. No calling the manager. One second, you're done. Guys, you get stopped by a cop, he walks up, you know how fast you were going? <laughs> so I guess again, the army. <laughs> not, not one went, he's right, we are. <laughs> I know what you're talking about, young men and women of the army. Look, hey, my, my great, great grandfather fought in the Civil War. My grandfather fought in World War I. My other grandfather and an uncle fought in World War II. My uncle and my cousin fought in Vietnam. Check this out. I almost got cast in platoon. So I know what it's like. Because you go. That's you serve your country. Because it's America. I didn't know if they'd have snacks. You know, that's what you go. But you, you know, I didn't know. Yes, they went with Tom Berenger. I was ready any time for the call. Okay, two people saw platoon. Um, <laughs> it is true. I do USO shows. You know, you give back to the troops, whatever. It's what? Well, it's not, yeah. Of course you do. Of course you do. It's not a big, I didn't mean, you know. Because it's inspiring, man. They inspire, you guys inspire me. Because it, you go to an army base, marine base, man, it's, it's goosebumps. They each have a song, you know? The army, as those case songs go rolling along, right? Marines from the halls of Montezuma, the Navy, anchors away, my boy. You do an Air Force base? Off we go into the wild blue yonder. What kind of a military song is that? Who picked that for the song? Who begins a military anthem with off we go? Off we go into the wild blue yonder. We'll go to Pottery Barn and buy some sheets. <laughs> the, the Coast Guard has a better song than that. Oh, well, no, we're not the Navy, but we still got boats. That's an honest song. It's honest. It's from the heart. 
They're singing of their experience. I did a USO show. I went out. I landed on the deck of an aircraft carrier, went out to the USS John Stennis, middle of the Pacific Ocean, landed on the deck, arrested landing, did a show on the deck of the carrier. I, well, don't clap yet. <laughs> I, you have to do training to land on the deck of an aircraft carrier. You have to go to landing on carrier school. I show up to the training. They've never had anybody as big as me land on the deck of an aircraft. They have no helmet that fits me. They're duct taping luggage to my head. <laughs> They're putting styrofoam cups in my pockets. I'm, now I'm the special kid. I'm taking the boat right now. Wait a minute. <laughs> the guy comes up for the training. My name is Ensign Gonzalez. I could kill any of you with a pen. I will wave my hand, we will be pulling six or seven G's going in a turn to hit the deck of the carrier. G's, macho turn. <laughs> <laughs> then we will land on the deck of the carrier and stop. <laughs> <laughs> Already, the helmet's on. I just, ah, he's, in the event that the aircraft will go off the deck of the carrier. <laughs> Please wait until the weight of the engines has turned the aircraft upside down and the cabin has filled with water before unhooking your safety harness. <laughs> and Cinco Gonzalez, I'm unhooking my safety harness now! <laughs> I'm on this plane, he waves his hand, oh, okay, we're gonna pull G's. Oh, pulling G's isn't that bad. Ah! 600 miles an hour, ah! zero. My spleen came out my eye socket. <laughs> But I come from these tough guys. My grandfather was a coal miner. My uncles worked in quarries. My brothers, two brothers, still big, strong, Pennsylvania men. <laughs> I wanted to be an actor. Show business, show business. <laughs> I don't know what happened. There was a ripple in the gene pool. I got the recessive theater gene. <laughs> I did. I, I went to acting school. I auditioned for Broadway shows. That's right, six foot three, 230 pounds, auditioning for Broadway. Oh, what a beautiful morning. Oh, what a beautiful day. I can't get a job in the theater because I'm too big and I'm not gay. <laughs> I try. I try. I didn't mean, try being gay. I mean, I, you know, I tried to get in show. I tried to get in the shows. I was trying to do a Broadway show. All right, one time, it was a national tour. <laughs> oh, come on, my early career. I, I walk into the theater, ready to sing. The casting director's like, well, what are we gonna do with you? <laughs> Love the song. Unfortunately, we're not casting for the role of a building. <laughs> <laughs> Would you excuse us? You're scaring some of the dancers. <laughs> Maybe you could come back, work as a cow in our Christmas pageant. <laughs> so I did. <laughs> Kim, move. I'm a geek. I truly admit it. It's liberating. I don't care. I'm a geek. Uh, uh, I don't care. <laughs> People did it behind my back when I was in high school. Now I do it on stage for money. <laughs> I wasn't a macho guy in school. Yeah, these guys, I know. I see you out there. You guys with a two page spread of the yearbook. I was the back of the yearbook. You know, the candid black and white shots in the back of the book. Four people at the lockers, three look fine. I'm over in the side, like.
Because the back of the book, nobody will see it. The next day, hey, Wilson! <laughs> figured me out very quickly when I was in school. I, <laughs> I was president of the debating team. I played the tuba in the band. Paint your own picture, okay? <laughs> yeah, I have asthma, an asthmatic tuba player, okay? <laughs> yeah, I spent four years of high school just trying to make a sound out of the thing. <laughs> inhaler duct taped to my mouthpiece. <laughs> Clarinet players helping me carry the horn, catch the other kids. <laughs> Gotta love those clarinet players. Yeah, they never got a date, but they were very nice girls. <laughs> oh, come on. Clarinet players. <laughs> Better than Flag Girl, okay? <laughs> flag Girls, that is pathetic. Come on. I didn't make cheerleading. I didn't make drill team. I didn't make field hockey. other musician in the band. At the football games, they sit down at the front of the stands to watch the game, talk to their friends, have a good time. Tuba players, no. Top of the section, double Q, nosebleed, just swinging back and forth. Da, 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 da. That's all tuba players do. They swing those things back and forth, trying to dodge all the garbage you people are trying to throw into the things. <laughs> I know you people, every football game we're marching in in our nice clean uniforms. You people are all up at the stand and <laughs> here come the tubas. <laughs> Give me the rest of my hot dog. Yeah. <laughs> my senior year, I was drum major of the marching band. Big white hat, gold cord on the jacket, power whistle. You know those flute players. That <laughs> A lot of people don't know. Band people know this. Other people do not. Drum major's job in the marching band, very important. The drum major's job is, first of all, conduct the band. Secondly, much more importantly, point out horse poop during parades. <laughs> You're following the mounted police every parade. It's 18 horses, marching band. You watch the drum major. He's the guy going. <laughs> the band lines. <laughs> Who's in the back to miss the signal? The tuba players, okay? <laughs> I'm 13 years old, I step right in the stuff. Now we gotta drag one band shoe the entire parade. <laughs> I'm pushing up my glasses. It's raining juji fruits. <laughs> yeah. By the end of a parade, you gotta have 60 bucks worth of juji fruits on the inside of a tuba. But all the jock guys and their friends, here they come. Yeah, baby! Keep going, little one's starting to cry. Woo! <laughs> we went to competitions, band competitions. They compete in marching band. Yeah? Right? You did, huh? Yes? Yeah, sure. 
at a stadium, right? All the bands bus in from everywhere. Moms, dads, grandmas, grandpas come. Marching bands compete. So I told you, I grew up in Pennsylvania. Bunch of geeky kids from the suburbs. We get bused to an inner city school for a marching band competition. <laughs> we march into the stadium, same thing every year. We're the white kids, we're the white kids, we're so white. White kids, this is not our neighborhood, Bobby. All right, same thing. And from the distance, coming into the stadium, we hear our competition. One of these inner city high schools from North Philadelphia, we hear out in the parking lot. Like, what is that sound? Uh, I don't know, but it's getting closer. Please welcome Jesse Jackson. Hi. They've got an electric bass player and guys pushing an amp. We're standing there, light blue uniforms, big white hats. We look like giant Q-tips. <laughs> hey, they're really good. Where'd they get an extension cord that long? <laughs> I mean, I'm the drum major, right? I'm just conducting dan 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 Inner city school drum major, the kid's dressed like Batman. He's got purple, well, eight foot long satin cape. They got a kid playing the turntable. Crap. The tuba players had rims. It was unbelievable. They could, we couldn't compete with that. You can't compete with that. That is humiliating. Football games? That's real humiliation. We get bused to an inner city school for a football game from the suburbs. We actually have a cheer. Repel them, repel them, make them relinquish the ball. <laughs> that doesn't cut it when across the field they're going, U-G-L-Y, you ain't got no alibi, you ugly, <laughs> you ugly. <laughs> we forfeit kids to the buses. Let's go get your buddy, hold your buddy's hand, everybody. We're leaving early. I know, I'll tell you what forfeiting means in a minute. Yes, we'll stop at Dairy Queen, kids. Come on, everybody. When they throw things, it means they like us. Come on, kids, to the bus. Let's go, everybody. Flag girls, help us out. Defend and retreat. Defend and retreat. To the bus, everybody. We're going. Now I got kids. I got I'm dealing with the same stuff. I got four kids. Uh, fertility, not a problem. That's right. Some of us didn't have time for football practice. <laughs> Sorry, I can't make practice, coach. I'm busy. <laughs> Four kids. I'm an Irish Catholic. We're very fertile people. Irish Catholic, we make them clear, but we make them fast. <laughs> Ow. I don't have any pigments. Get down there, Sean. The Kellys need you. Irish Catholics, I'm like, hey, night honey, kid, you get one, okay? It doesn't, no. <laughs> Sit on a love seat together. Ooh, was that your elbow? <laughs> kid, it happens. <laughs> I have to run out of the room to sneeze, okay? Ladies up front, you might want to check out an EPT on the way home, okay? I have a powerful <laughs> sexual mojo. Four kids. That's a family. That's going for it. That's the pro level. Not you people with this one little yuppie Chia kid. You know. Chi 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 chi. Put him on my shelf. Watch him grow. <laughs> oh, Justin's advanced in all his classes. Is that right, lady? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Congratulations on the bumper sticker. I'm trying to survive, okay? <laughs> 
I know we have single people here tonight. I, yeah, I love you. Yeah, absolutely. You belong dates. Don't come up to me after the show with a uh, like we've been together a year and a half. We don't have children, but I'll tell you what, our dog is our baby. Shut up. <laughs> you stupid dog people. Your dog is not your baby. You come talk to me when you spend five grand taking the dog to Disney World, okay? <laughs> spend 80,000 bucks putting muffin through dog college, then come talk to me. <laughs> the dog is my baby. Oh yeah, when your dog is sick and about to throw up, do you go, oh honey! Because <laughs> that's what you do when you're a parent. child is sick and about to hurl from some deep, innate, stupid place. You must cup your hands and run toward the kid. <laughs> oh, honey, oh. That was a mistake. <laughs> what do I do with this now? A paper towel is not going to help me. Thank you. <laughs> Who gave you Skittles? <laughs> Do Skittles ever digest? <laughs> you, hey, you're at a 4th of July barbecue. What? Halloween Skittle! <laughs> Anybody have one child here? The one? Well, that, uh, that's not a child, really. That's a fancy pet. Just so we understand. <laughs> what? You're not a parent. You're a hobbyist. It's nice to have a hobby. I have hobbies. Everybody has a hobby. Well, you can handle one kid with a chair and a roll of duct tape. I've seen it happen. <laughs> and you have two, right? You think that's a family? Get out of here. Second one comes, I got this one, you got that one. He's going into DVDs. Watch him. Yes, DVD set. I got her. Thank you. Watch him. <laughs> and you have three. I got this one, you got that one. And a free agent. <laughs> Someone's approaching the edge of the radar screen. My son is the fourth. He cannot use his thumbs. He has no verbal skills. He is monkey boy. Just, ah! 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 He follows a trail of cookies from place to place. Monkey boy, cookies! More cookies, monkey boy! Ah! I don't have the time. He's going to have to get with the program. <laughs> this first child, so romantic, huh? Your first baby's coming. You're having my baby. <laughs> Every sunset's gorgeous. Flowers bloom wherever you walk. Boink, boink, boink. <laughs> and the guy's being all supportive. Honey, I love you so much. Love you, love, 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 love. <laughs> I want to welcome this new miracle into our lives. <laughs> I childproofed every cabinet in the house. I boiled the sofa for a half an hour. <laughs> Nothing unclean will touch our precious miracle's little mouth. Boink, boink, boink. <laughs> when you have four kids, let me tell you, fourth kid sterilization, you find a pacifier under that car seat after six months, blow on it. <laughs> I got it, buddy, found it. It's right here. Did we dry food on the thing? Jelly, jelly, binky, buddy, bonus, jelly. Mm. Mm. It's jelly, come on. Mm. Mm. Keep working, it'll soften up. Mm. Mm. The, hey, the dirt will make him stronger. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I had three girls and then a boy. Yeah, three girls, then a boy. But I'll tell you what, I'm raising him as a girl because I'm not buying all new stuff. No. <laughs> You'll put on the pink jumper. You'll like it, buddy. Pink's a macho color. Put it on. 
that it's not a skirt, it's a kilt. Put on your kilt. <laughs> Maxi pads, I told you, those are knee pads. You stick them back on and get back on the soccer field. I don't care what people say. It's good sports equipment. Adidas, Reebok, Kotex, stick them on. <laughs> I bought a box of 7,500 of those things at Costco. I'm not wasting one, champ. We don't waste in this house. I'll use them as sticky cocktail napkins. Don't try me. <laughs> I love Costco. I'd say I'm Commander Costco. Yeah, I got a tattoo, Kirkland signature, right there, baby. That's right. If it doesn't come in a box of 7,500, I don't buy it. That's man shopping. That's Costco's man shopping. You, a guy going to Costco come out of there with 300 bucks worth of chicken and batteries. <laughs> Did you get the bread? <laughs> Did you see this many batteries? <laughs> I'll come back to that cart with a gigantic cinder block of deodorants. Honey, look at this thing! <laughs> With a normal lifespan, I will never buy deodorant again! <laughs> I'll buy 3,000 pens for five bucks. <laughs> I don't even need pens. I'll throw them out the car window. Free pens! <laughs> I'm the king of pens! <laughs> I'm not kidding. I, if they put a Costco, right next door to a Home Depot. I would build a hut out of PVC pipe, get a block of cheese, you would never see me again. <laughs> Goodbye. That's right. Who's the guy in aisle 13? <laughs> we are the Costconia tribe. By night, we sleep behind giant bags of dog food. By day, we survive on free samples. <laughs> they will never find us. That's right. Three girls, 20, 18, 16. Oh, my house looks like Clay Aiken exploded in it, okay? I, I live in Malibu Barbie's dream house. There is a pink, fluffy, furry thing on every surface in the house. My son and I huddle in a corner covered in steer blood chanting. <laughs> I try to protect him from the estrogen cloud. <laughs> Get in the den, buddy. It's coming to the kitchen. <coughs> no, I will not take you to Pottery Barn. Get in the kitchen. <coughs> Three daughters. I, I own 37 Barbies in body parts alone. People with daughters, no, we have an entire Barbie morgue drawer. <laughs> Legless torsos, a hair stick at Barbie. What happened to you? <laughs> Ken's out in the pool. <laughs> what is with you girls and Ken? You take it all out on Ken, don't you? I know. Look, every Christmas morning, oh, Ken, his head is off. <laughs> Say, honey, you want a Barbie? Go assemble one yourself, okay? Snap on a pair of legs. If she walks like this, she's got one of dead Ken's legs on, all right? <laughs> but three girls and then a boy? Are you kidding me? But you could give a girl a bicycle. Oh, have a nice ride on a sunny day. Huh? A shovel, a tool, plant a flower for mommy. <laughs> a Barbie, little friend you can talk to when you're feeling blue. 
then you have a boy. A bicycle is something you can lift up and hit somebody in the head with. And a shovel, you can hit somebody in the head with. And a barber with a swing in here, you can hit somebody in the head with. A boy, two-year-old boy, picks up a Barbie, looks at those pointy plastic toes, and goes, oh. Can stab with Barbie. Barbie kills. Barbie good. Boys will make a weapon out of anything. You put a baby boy in a high chair, give him a slice of cheese, he's like, you know, if I throw this fast enough, I could kill somebody. I had three girls then, but don't mess with me. You give a girl a popsicle stick. I, can I have some glue? I'd like to make an arts and crafts project. <laughs> give a boy a popsicle stick. I'm going to the driveway to sharpen this. <laughs> I'm going to tape this to a slice of cheese and kill somebody. But they don't listen. Discipline, totally different. Boys and girls, you have three girls. Daddy has to walk on eggshells to just discipline girls. They take what you say so seriously. You do the lightest thing. May I speak with you, young lady? I'm disappointed in you. <laughs> I was expecting a lot better behavior from a young lady like you. I don't expect to see that again. Do you understand, Daddy? She's over here. <laughs> <laughs> like she's permanently psychologically damaged. <laughs> then you have a boy, the only thing that works. Knock it off! <laughs> or I'll kill you! And no matter what you say to a boy, he hears Charlie Brown's teachers. <laughs> you can see it in his eyes. He doesn't care. He does not care. You could put a boy in a timeout for seven years. He'll just stand there. Uh, eventually, you're going to crack. Two more minutes, <laughs> I'm shaking. One thing a boy will listen to, communicate with. <laughs> the one thing a boy, the silver back ache. That's because mom has like 16 levels of anger, right? Disappointment, frustration, impatient, right? Displeased, perturbed, annoyed, irritated, upset, mad, enraged, livid. Insane! Dad has watching TV, silverback ape. <laughs> My wife will stand there for a half an hour. You better get up and brush your teeth, buddy. I told you, you better start moving. You had better st I'm stomping my foot now. My foot is stomping, buddy. Don't try me tonight. I'm stomping my foot. You better start moving. I'm gonna, one. Oh, you want, one, two, don't let me get, two. I'm, two and a half. Tom, will you tell him to brush his teeth? No! <laughs> do you want to walk to the bathroom? Or do you want to fly? I can get you there real fast, buddy. How about this? I'll brush your teeth for you. Remember that night? <laughs> he goes. But when a boy finally goes, it's like he's walking in a wind tunnel. Brush your teeth. Okay! My son's playing baseball now. 
but he's a big baseball guy. I was not a jock. I was in the band. I have asthma. <laughs> Playing baseball, little league baseball. It's, you know, I'm a supportive dad, but I'm the dad at the baseball game. Hey, great guys! That's so, do we get points for that? You know, I don't know. <laughs> but now I'm up in the stands, sitting next to the psycho little league dads. You know what I'm talking about? They got up there. Get in that batter's box, Kenny. Get up there and get a hit, buddy. You're living my dream now. <laughs> Succeed in sports or I will withdraw my love. <laughs> I swear the guy's son is up at bat. He gets hit with a pitch. They throw hard. He starts to don't you cry, Kenny. <laughs> you start crying, you're not coming home in my car. <laughs> you can come home with me, Kenny. Your dad's a psycho. <laughs> I would cry, Ken. Come back to my house. We'll sing about it. <laughs> I, oh, well, it's true. Oh, my gosh. But now, but you know, living in Los Angeles, it's a very multicultural city. I'm not the most clueless dad at our Little League. We have dads from um, Chakalakistan, you know, I mean, they're just, they're just standing up. Ramja, go up, hold the stick, and then you run to the pillow. So, don't tell him that, sir. Ramja, take the stick, run to the pillow. Don't tell him to run to the pillow, sir. Your boy, he ran to the pillow. When can Ramja run to the pillow? He needs four balls to run to the pillow. Oh, like the mighty goat of Shamokasha. <laughs> when you have the balls of the mighty goat, Ramja, you run to the pillow. <laughs> it is, it's hot now, isn't it? It's, um, it's hot at my house, too. Living in a deserty part. Gets this hot, and just go outside to spit and watch it evaporate. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you don't know what I'm talking about. Come on. You can wash your car windshield at the gas station, get that squeegee all wet, <laughs> turn it over. <laughs> so it's hot. I went out to Target, got one of those fans. You know, the big box fan, 20 bucks next to the cash register. Plug it in. Now I have four kids singing into this fan. <laughs> All summer long. They start with a siren. Move on to songs. So you have three girls, they love to sing into a fan. Have a boy, he has to touch the fan. <laughs> Never occurred to anybody else. <laughs> boy comes along, oh, a spinning propeller plugged into an electrical socket. <laughs> I'm gonna touch that thing. Doesn't matter what you don't touch that fan, mister. That is dangerous. He's waiting for an opening. As soon as the room clears. <laughs> My son left, he did it all last summer. He was uh, Thanks for coming out, everybody. They, uh, they, uh, hey. This is what I love to do, live performing. This is what it's all about. I'm not going out on some low-level celebrity 
death part. <laughs> You're not gonna see Montel, it messed with my head. I had to rob a bank and get on drugs. <laughs> they actually, they called my agent. They, they asked if I wanted to be on that show, The Surreal Life. <laughs> Are you? <laughs> yeah, people are like, oh, oh. Well, like, I know, okay? I mean, they take you to the edge of a cliff. <laughs> You would even be on the surreal life? Is that Vanilla Ice's dead bot? <laughs> You're done! That's it! <laughs> Only way I'm gonna be on the surreal life is if they cast Renee Magritte and Salvador Dali. I might show up. <laughs> Alright, that was for like three museum goers. <laughs> Come on, you want reality TV? Alright, I'm on the surreal life. Day one, Flavor Flav is dead. Okay? <laughs> I don't look. I'll just. All the producer. Hey, listen, uh, yeah, we started shooting. Flavor Flav hit me with his clock, so I killed him with Gary Coleman. Yeah. No, not me and Gary, no, I killed him with Gary Coleman. Make it snappy, uh, Vern Troyer and I are taking the scooter to Vegas. You know, I, I began my career as a children's entertainer singing songs and stories to kids across the third world with my puppet friend, Mipsy. We, you know, it's a funny part of the show, serious part of the show. Thank you. We lost Mipsy in a felt explosion in Burundi. But I, Funny for you, I guess. You didn't watch the little wiggly eyes fly right by your face. But I'm performing for grown-ups now, adults in theaters. I, I've changed some of the lyrics to my kids' songs to help adults face issues in their lives. I hope they touch your heart. <clears throat> Sometimes I feel down when I drive around town and there's so much to do. I have errands to run and it's not very fun when I'm driving behind you. Oh, green means go, Mr. Stupid Man ahead of me. Green means go, Mr. Idiot in front of me. Get off the phone, move your little hiney. If I miss this light, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> Mr. Carjacker, oh, what a big, big gun, Mr. Car Jacker, your fun has just begun. Oh, I hope you go to jail. I hope you get life. I hope a big fat convict makes you his wife. Mr. Car Jacker, my friend. <laughs> Thanks. How many married guys do we have out there? Here's one for you, married guys. I don't remember what sex is like, but my birthday's coming up. Don't remember what sex is like, but my birthday's coming up. I hope it all comes back to me. I think we start out naked. Don't worry if you're not that into it. I don't care if you just fake it. Again, when's your birthday? When's your birthday? March? Hang in there. One for you guys over 40. Oh, what's the rubber glove for, doctor? I thought that we were done. What's the rubber glove for, doctor? That doesn't look like a much fun. A prostate's fine, it feels all right. Hey, put on some music and dim this light. What's the rubber glove for, doctor? I told you I feel fine. <laughs> Well, I wrote for you this song in haiku because I don't have that much time. <laughs> they, uh... Haiku song. 
rules, easy to write, right to the point. <laughs> Jerry Lewis wore new socks every show, but I've worn these socks before. <laughs> It's strange that a dog will eat a dead bird, but will never eat a grape. <laughs> it's strange that a dog will eat a dead bird, but will never eat a grape. 17 syllables! <laughs> Wikipedia, H-A-I-K-U, okay? <laughs> Danny Bonaducci probably wouldn't make a good babysitter. <laughs> I don't write like Shakespeare, but then he didn't have antibiotics. <laughs> When whips west across the cactus of the desert, where'd I put my lip balm? <laughs> I want to be rich, but I hear lottery winners are sometimes sad. <laughs> Count them, 17 syllables. Rushes on faster and faster, but the fact is you can't rush toast. <laughs> Fred Flintstone ordered ribs every week. He had to know they'd tip his car. Waiting for stragglers on that one. <laughs> I know a lot of you are in your twenties. Hey, my mother, daddy never loved me. Oh. 40, screw it. <laughs> you say you want a revolution, kid. Yeah, I did two once. No, seriously, I did, but I'm over 40. I don't care. <laughs> I'm gonna change the world and make the news. Now it's too much hassle just to change my shoes. I just don't care. Turning 40 is the best. Old guys rule because they couldn't care less. My blood pressure may be way too high. Give me another donut, I'm still alive. <laughs> I'm gonna rip up every parking ticket, tell my HMO to stick it. Cause I'm over 40, I don't care. My kids stare at me in a state of shock cause I'm wearing sandals with a pair of black socks. Guess what kids, I don't care. <laughs> Dad, my friends are coming over, what do I say? Tell them I'm a distant relative from Norway. I don't care. Fashion statements aren't for me. I'm a simple dresser, pretty low key, a down vessel with swim trunks. Whatever's clean, smell the armpits and say la vie. The important things in life to me are a remote control and a glass of iced tea. I'm over 40, I don't care. <laughs> Head to the mall to pick up some new tennis balls for the bottom of my walker. Too much hatred, too many guns, the world's messed up, life's no fun. Guess what, kid? I'm over 40, I don't care. <laughs> Global warm has just begun. Look, why don't you tattoo your neck and pierce your tongue, all right? I don't care. In your 20s, you're getting life in gear, living fast, playing by ear by your 30s. You look in the mirror, get that existential fear by your 40s. Screw it, I'll be dead in 30 years. I'm over 40. I don't care, I'm over 40.
years. This is my favorite part of the show. When I think about the singer-songwriters of the past, Dan Fogelberg, John Denver, James Taylor. Yeah, well, they're going, are they on MySpace? <laughs> yeah. Click on me for a free laptop. <laughs> I know they're old, all right, but they're beautiful songwriters. The Rolling Stones are on tour now. You start me up. <laughs> I swear, Keith Richards is dead, and they stuffed him and take him on tour. I swear. <laughs> Yeah, that's a fact. Her nose is just perfect and her smile just gleams. She looks like a model in a magazine. She got her itty bitty body in a teeny tiny skirt. You can see her belly button neat, her purple skimpy shirt. She's a California beauty who could stop the show. But there's one thing, fellas, that you got to know. She's my daughter. <laughs> You touch her or hurt her or make her sad I'm gonna hurt you twice as bad <laughs> I'm the kind of guy that likes to have some fun Just drinking lots of liquor and polishing my gun You wanna mess around with my pussy cat I might just kill you with a baseball bat I own a crowbar, steak knives, I got a hatchet man well, come on, let's face it, I could kill you with my bare hands. I can't you making moves on her, I'll know just what to do. I'll shove my foot so far up there, I could wear you as a shoe. She's my daughter. <laughs> hey, that's right, she's my daughter. Ooh, 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 ooh. I'll sneak into your room where your mommy makes your bed. I'll grab that stupid surfer necklace and I'll beat your little head in. She's my daughter. That's right, she's my daughter. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Come on over for dinner and meet us friendly folk. Just remember, little fella, this song is not a joke. Cause I'm steamroller. I'm gonna roll all over you. Thanks for coming out, everybody. Good night.